are about to listen to the Dr. Dahlia Show. Sassy, stimulating medical talk radio. Any medical advice Dr. Dahlia Wax gives on her show should not be substituted for an actual visit to your medical provider. And now, here's Dr. Dahlia. Dolly one eight seven seven D O C D A L I. So I uh, hear a lot of your frustrations, and thank you guys for telling me a lot of what you're dealing with. And this is something that um, I think we have talked about before, but we need to talk about again. Where you don't have a regular doctor anymore. Your family doctor, your family physician, your family nurse practitioner or PA who took care of you for years. You get now a different medical provider every time, or you're using telemedicine, and you ask for an antibiotic, or you ask for a treatment, and when the medical provider says, well, it's not indicated, you respond by, I know my body. I know my body. And for me, when I was in practice, and when I was an ER doc, very powerful your instinct Uh, in fact when you do pediatrics you always ask the parent now what do you think it is you know your child better than anybody else on this planet we're going to give you our medical advice but you have an insight that we can never replicate but when you don't know that family very well and you don't have your own medical office and you work for a corporation And now you have the suits breathing down your neck and the suits who are going to be liable if you don't do medicine exactly by the book and add instinct to the mix because now they could get sued. Your medical provider now is a corporate employee. And so the frustration you get with customer service lines and other companies that you deal with in retail is starting to now bleed into your care with your medical provider. So you have a cough. It's July. No fever. The cough does not go away. And you want a Z-Pack. And you say, but I know my body. If I take this Z-Pack, I'm going to feel better. Now, when you get me, I'm going to say, I hear you. Z-Packs always make me feel better. I could have had menstrual cramps. That Z-Pack would make me feel better. But if I'm working for a company that does not want Z-Packs written for bronchitis, because most bronchitises are viral, your answer is going to be, we have guidelines. And we need to follow those guidelines. This could be a COVID cough. This could be RSV. Um, There are other methods and other things we could do to prevent the cough. Z-Packs, it's a medical mystery. Why Z-Packs make so many people feel better. Another medical mystery, how you might not have a UTI, but you take an antibiotic and you feel better right away. I think there might be an anti-inflammatory component or something that that antibiotic does to just change the environment enough where all of a sudden your, your, your symptoms go away. But because of antibiotic resistance, there is a bigger fight that are on doctor's shoulders to fight. And so we are now responsible for all the antibiotic resistance out there. And now we have a duty to minimize that. On top of that, if you don't give antibiotics for typical bronchitis, now mind you, if you have COPD, studies have shown how Zithromax works great, and there's you know other, if you have a secondary pneumonia or we think you have community acquired pneumonia, that's a whole other issue. But if let's say a doctor decides, you know what, you want augmentin, I'll give it to you. I need the good rating. And then you get major GI upset or clostridium difficile, let's say or you go into a Stevens Johnson's reaction or some major allergy to it and you sue that doctor, that manager, that corporation, that company now has a tougher fight because the doctor gave an antibiotic for something that might, it might not have been indicated for. 
And so patients are getting frustrated that their doctor who knew them took care of them for years. Uh, you'll get women. They go, I have a different vaginal odor, they'll say, so I need antibiotics. There's other things you can do when the odor changes. It doesn't necessarily mean you have a full-blown bacterial infection. All right. So there's, but, well, but my doctor always gave me antibiotics every time I asked. Yeah. Well, uh, do you want to talk to that doctor? No, that doctor's no longer practice. Or that doctor said they can't do it anymore. I know my body. Just do it. And they're getting frustrated that they can't find providers that do that. And, and I don't know if we're ever going to get your neighborhood doc, you know, uh, small clinic. You know, I'm here for you. I'll do house calls. I don't know if we're going to get that again. We are going to have corporations do house calls. The house call will come back. It's going to be a doctor you never met. But we are going to get that back again. But now medicine has been so corporatized, if that's a word for it, and so embedded now with all these rules and best practices and all that, that a doctor who doesn't know you is not going to put their license on the line is not going to just go with instinct, is not going to, they're going to go by the book because that's what protects their job and that's what protects the company. Now, patient is always first. And then there's that argument. Well, do the guidelines put the patient first or does your instinct put the patient first? And so for those of you saying, I don't understand that, I am on all these, uh, uh, another example is these cough medicines with coding. We've really stopped using for cough. But I get, in the olden days, one teaspoon would knock down the cough, let you sleep at night. A lot of people felt better the next day and were pretty much done, especially if it was a viral cough. Well, now, because, you know, uh, you know of the addictive nature of these cough syrups, you're not getting cough syrup with coding. And I've had patients say, look, the doctor has, telemedicine doctor has given me steroids. They've given me antibiotics. They've given me, I just need a teaspoon of this. I know my body. I, you know, Look, it just, it's not going to happen these days. It's not going to happen. So you need to find a regular physician that understands you, can also educate you on what the proper treatments are. But, you know, if you feel like you're not being heard, I get the frustration, but that's the way medicine is now. one 877 Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month, and that's huge, but it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 855-SHARE-40. That's 855-SHARE-40. 855-SHARE-40. Hey guys, it's Dr. Dahlia. Fantasy football season is coming, but sadly, too many of you are taking the bench while the country takes part in one of the most exciting and lucrative industries out there. Don't know how to play? Well, huddle up and listen. Paul Kalikas and I have written a fantasy football pocket guide for beginners. This book walks you through the basics and shows you how simple and lucrative joining or creating a fantasy football team can be. Read our Fancy Football Pocket Guide for Beginners found on Amazon or follow the links on X and Facebook. That's Fantasy Football Pocket Guides for Beginners. Don't be left out. In a study, it was found that 33% of 44 herbal supplements had no trace of the advertised herb. Don't let that happen to you. Hi, this is Dr. Mitch. If you want to ensure quality, please go to TotalWellness.com. Supplements made for physicians only now available to you too. TotalWellness.com, helping you to look good, feel good, and enjoy Total Wellness. All right, we are 
are back on the Dr. Dahlia Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 doc Big thanks to, Je- to Talk Media Network for making the show happen. And big thanks to Daniel, our producer. And big thanks to you all for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at X, Dr. Dahlia, Facebook, The Dr. Dahlia Show, and on YouTube, click like and subscribe. So yesterday I was watching the uh, White House press conference, and I kind of did a double take with this one question, and I think we're going to get some clarification from the White House today because many people are also kind of scratching their head going, what's going on? So Peter Ducey from Fox News had um, pressed the White House press secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre, about the president's mental health, which has been now happening every day. They come out and talk about other things, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, support for, you know, uh, those suffering from the hurricane barrel after effects and, you know, ceasefire. Um, possibility with Israel and Gaza. Um, uh, uh, they haven't really mentioned a lot about the hostages and how to get our hostages home. Uh, I think we have six Americans still over there, but they, you know, we'll we'll bring up and then most of the questions are surrounding Biden's mental health because that's that's now the hot topic. Finally, it became a topic in the news. So Peter Ducey said. Um, they were talking about how he had, you know, said something about his mental health. And Corinne Jean Pierre says he makes a joke. People think it's funny. You know, people laugh at his jokes. It's a joke. He goes, Well, he also says he's sharpest before 8 p.m. So say that the Pentagon at some point picks up an incoming nuke. It's 11 p.m. Who do you call? The First Lady? And so Jean Pierre said that the president has a team. To let him know of any news that is pertinent and important. So he has a team. She also said that Biden has somebody he appoints to get the news from the National Security Council. Should that scenario ever happen? She didn't say who that person was. Now, that was a very interesting answer. Because the answer should have been... Our commander in chief is the commander in chief. And no hour of the day will keep him from doing his job. He will be the one that, but instead she brought up a team. Now, she said the team you know, will notify him. Didn't say if it was that moment in time or do they wake them up or do they i mean we understand presidents sleep yeah they they need sleep that that's fine it's just that that wasn't the typical robust answer you would think the spokesperson for the commander-in-chief would say and then it was it was carefully worded but just made you kind of do a double take going okay so what, what is it the team that is going to manage it or now i mean at any other response would have you know any, any for any other president it would have been like I, I, the president is on duty he's the one that's on 24 7 there that that's who he is unless you know he's having a surgical procedure and then kamala harris the vice president takes over but he's the one buck stops with him of course he's we all going to be notified right away. And they, but instead, she brought up a team. Now, that's intriguing because we have suspected since his inauguration that there is somebody else running the country. Now, if we do semantics, okay, I get it. Now, there are other people besides the president in the White House. There are other people in the executive branch. And I get that, yes, if the Pentagon sees a nuke, they're going to make a call and it might be whoever answers Biden's phone. I get that. But what Peter Ducey and what people were looking for is Pentagon has direct access to the president 24-7 and the president is on it. So now it's, so is he sleeping? Is somebody else? And is is it what we suspect another team doing things? Jill Biden is a very present first lady, which makes us wonder if she's running things. And even Peter Ducey asked why she's in on the meetings. 
Does she have security clearance? And so this is, you know, there's the more, you know, I'm, I'm almost wondering, I, I know they promise daily press conferences, but the more they bring Corinne Jean-Pierre, who, by the way, I really respect, I get her job is hard. Not easy. You know, I, I, I think she's doing a better job than Jen Psaki, but, I, you know, but the, still, uh, you 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 could see the frustration that she has in that she has she has a tall order to try to present this and uh, no wonder people call it a cover up that's a lot of work to keep that curtain up and honestly biden could put all this to rest just come out no well, come out do your press conference just answer the question so Corinne jean pierre doesn't have to they talk about elder abuse it's Corinne jean pierre abuse Making her answer questions you should be answering. You know, so, but uh, the wife, you know, is Jill running things. Now, with Woodrow Wilson, when he had a stroke, it was partially that the wife ran things. And fascinating, especially during that time in the early, you know, 20th century. Uh, But, you know, we even saw Hunter Biden, you know, with him. And, you know, yeah, there is a question on if president gets briefed you know what what are the security clearances of the people around him and i know about security clearance because i work for the government i have family members who work for the government i mean it is your security clearance is a gift you don't blow it but it is a very big responsibility and you have a lot of duties that come with that you will lose your security clearance if you have classified documents in your garage, in your bathroom. So Trump loses his security clearance. He left office. And if some of those documents were classified and they were in an area that was not secured or following the rules, then that that could be an issue. If Biden has classified documents in a home that Hunter Biden has access to, or open, like a garage by his Corvette, then that causes him to, in fact, when you look at the security clearance protocols and and the guidelines, Trump or Biden, Biden would have already lost his clearance. Trump's out of office. But when they say, well, Biden has immunity, you, uh, uh, you will lose your security clearance if you violate any of the security clearance rules. So you wonder, and then if Jill is now, now he could deputize her, he could give her, but then she has to go through a vetting, but I don't think she has the security clearance to be in these meetings. Now, somebody could say, but what if it's their caretaker? Well, if Jill is his caretaker, but then that brings up that whole other issue of, okay, why does he need a caretaker? Our commander in chief needs a caretaker? That they're, they're still there. So uh, there, there's going to be more questions. And so if there is a nuclear attack, and I understand that was, you know, a question that was rhetoric or it was a uh, rhetoric or it was a uh, not a, um, you know, uh, not necessarily happening exactly today. It is a question that we all have going if it goes down, if this goes down. Uh, in fact, some people predict that if Trump does win, Putin or Kim Jong-un or Xi Jinping is going to start while Biden's still president. I do believe Trump will come up with some sort of a peace treaty for uh, Russia and Ukraine because I don't think Putin is going to want to mess with Trump. And I think uh, it's going to be kind of like the hostage crisis in 79. And then when Reagan took over, the hostages were free. I think Putin is going to also want that time to regroup. But before then, you know, before Trump would take office and Biden's still in charge, yeah, they could very easily. So we, it is a situation that we need to be prepared for. And so I think it was a valid question. Who gets called after 8 p.m.? Now, where did this 8 p.m. come from? Well, President Biden had told Democratic governors that he's going to try to get more rest. And I believe he said... 
This was um, the Democratic governors during a private meeting that he would stop scheduling events after 8 p.m. so he could get more sleep. And, uh, you know, mind you, I understand that people need their sleep. You know, me, I'll work all hours if it needs to be. But in terms of a public event, how many public events need to necessarily happen at 930 on a Monday evening? You know, but on the other end, when you're overseas, that you know, doesn't mean you're not going to be going to those events. One eight seven seven dot dollar. Don't go away. Dr. Dahlia here. Are you tired, burned out, gaining weight, succumbing to the daily pressures of life? Well, how's your dopamine doing? How you feel right now, how you'll feel an hour from now, and how you'll feel next week is completely reliant on your dopamine. Our daily motivation and willingness to push through challenges depends on the intricate chemical process dopamine provides. Christian Kalikas and I created Deploying Dopamine, a book that tells you what dopamine is, what it dysfunctions, and how to successfully deploy it when needed. Find Deploying Dopamine on Amazon today. Check it out. Carl Amari here to tell you about our newest website for old-time radio lovers. It's 100radioshows.com. At this site, there are five old-time radio shows waiting for you to download free as our gift to you. And be sure to browse the additional 700 old-time radio shows available to you for 70% off by using the promo code RADIO at checkout. This is a limited-time offer, so log on to 100radioshows.com. That's 100radioshows.com. for teaming in one eight seven seven doc dolly one eight seven seven d o c d a l i so the white house may be reading the room as it pertains to gender affirming surgery in minors and we last week i believe the white house now they've had to clarify because the lgbtq ad plus community had brought up concerns with their statement but the Biden administration has basically said that they, they do are opposed to gender affirming surgery for transgender minors. Now, this was huge in that we have been struggling in America with you know, the right course to protect a child's fertility and a child's informed consent and a child's ability to choose and later you know, transition back or you know, be their biological sex if they want it to be with a sadly a permanent medical procedure that even in Europe they are not supporting. And so finally the White House said they do oppose gender affirming surgery. Now they do, however, support gender affirming care. In fact, they have taken their support all the way to the Supreme Court. The court has agreed to take up the question of whether gender affirming care bans for trans youth are unconstitutional in response to the Biden administration petitioning on behalf of trans youth and their families. The administration stands against laws that ban gender affirming care for trans youth, includes bans on surgeries right now, appears to be the same. So they want transgender care for youths which include puberty blockers and possibly hormones but they do have now a stand on surgery which i don't understand why it took that long that kind of should be obvious now why did this happen well um the new york times says that the white house announcement was sent to the new york times on wednesday in response to an article reporting that staff in the office of uh, Admiral Rachel Levine, an assistant secretary to the Department of Health and Human Services, had urged an influential international transgender health organization to remove age minimums for surgery from its treatment guidelines for minors. So an administra- a, a representative who is our assistant secretary to the Department of Health and Human Services had urged a health organization, a transgender health organization, to remove age minimums for surgery. Now, what 
were these ages that were, you know, this, according to the draft guidelines, it would have lowered the age minimums to 14 for hormonal treatments, 15 years old for mastectomies, 15 years old, removing their breasts. What if they want to have a baby later and breastfeed? 16 for breast augmentation or facial surgeries and 17 years old for genital surgeries or hysterectomies. The final guidelines released in 2022 removed the age-based recommendations. I, from what I understand, I know it sounds like a double negative, but Rachel Levine from the Department of Health and Human Services did not want age minimums. And so they got removed, which means, is a, can a mastectomy be now done for a 10-year-old? According to an HHS spokesperson who said in a statement on Friday that Admiral Levine shared her view with her staff that publishing the proposed lower ages for gender transition surgeries was not supported by science or research and could lead to an onslaught of attacks on the transgender community. Federal officials did not elaborate further on the administration's position regarding the scientific research or her role in having the age minimums removed. So, you know, as a physician, this, this is kind of frightening, right? Because the one thing I know, and, and I, I wish they would talk to more doctors, please, for the love of God. But I have had transgender patients. And first and foremost, a transgender individual may still want to have children. Just because somebody is transgender does not mean that they want one of their biological rights to be removed. And temporarily, they may say, I don't care, just get rid of it. This is what I want. We have many individuals who go, you know, I do want to have a baby. And I do want to care for a baby. I identify as male. But I think I do want to care for a baby. And if a 14-year-old or a 10-year-old can't decide that, that's normal. No 10-year-old knows if they want to have babies or not or if they want to breastfeed. And what we aren't doing in the media and what we aren't doing uh, publicly is talking to those who underwent mastectomy where they lost their breasts or had genital changes, or had puberty blockers. We aren't letting these people speak out on what they regret. And many individuals have said they feel like they can't because they feel like they're going against the, the transgender community. No, you're not. If you really want to help the transgender community, what is so life-saving for them is to allow there to be some proper science, some proper evidence, some proper guidance. I think one of the worst things you can do to the transgender community is make them infertile. So if you want to help the transgender community, maybe we need to have some open discussions about non-permanent scarring procedures. And, you know, the, the reason, this, the idea that now we have gender fluid where some people feel like a girl one day, a guy the next. That is evidence enough to explain that there are some individuals that may change their mind. So whatever you do has to have that off switch to allow it to be temporary. Now, what some people will say is, yeah, but puberty blockers are temporary. You block the puberty, and then you stop blocking the puberty, and then they'll go through puberty in their 20s or 30s or 40s. Do we know how healthy and safe that is? When you do do puberty blockers, then you have hormones to minimize hair growth, and you add very high doses of estrogen. Have you looked at transgender community blood clot risk? If you really want to help the transgender community, let's make sure they don't have a blood clot on an eight-hour flight. And so they make it sound like any of us who speak out saying, guys, can we maybe slow our roll? Can we do more science? Is anti-LGBTQAI+. I have a transgender individual in our, in our, in our uh, uh, extended family. 
I have people of the LGBTQ AI plus community in our family. I love them dearly. God bless them. And I want them healthy. I want them safe. And I, if they want to later have a baby, I, I, w- I want us to be supportive of that. But you start to mutilate them and their ability when they're kids. A mastectomy is not an easy thing to have. And, and we've had some transgender individuals speak out saying they wish it never got done. Now, mind you, you know, my breasts have really impeded my athletic abilities. I mean, honestly, I would have loved to be a runner, a figure skater. Those I, the, the boobs went from training bra to B cup to C cup overnight. But thank God I had them when I wanted to breastfeed my kids. There was a formula shortage. And this formula shortage was so bad that people were trying to figure out how to start breastfeeding. Because they had just gone to formula and now they couldn't feed their kids. How does an 8-year-old or a 10-year-old understand that? So the White House made a very important move saying, look, we're not going to, you know, and why are they doing that? Is it because the election's coming up? But we we need, you know, if you really want to help the transgender community, we we need to uh, have the signs. And the science is going to probably agree with what we've said. One eight seven seven dot Dolly. Considered by most, optimized curcumin is one of the few bioavailable and highly absorbable curcumin products on the market. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch. Since most chronic diseases have inflammation, our optimized curcumin seems to be a perfect addition to any nutritional program. It makes sense to me that preventing or reducing inflammation is a key component to our overall health. The Mayo Clinic found that curcumin can decrease swelling and inflammation, has antioxidant properties, and research suggests that curcumin can prevent cancer or at least slow the spread of cancer and in many instances make chemotherapy more effective. It protects our healthy cells even from radiation. TotalWellness.com where we help you to look good, feel good, and enjoy Total Wellness. Self-reliance. It's not a phrase we hear much in our culture these days. It might conjure up images of pioneers, the West, rifles, strapping men, and strong women. But what does it mean for us in today's world? The New American Magazine has just released its latest collector's edition, Self-Reliance, Foundation of Freedom. In it, the New American authors outline the necessity of self-reliance for a free people, tips for self-reliant living, and the importance of not giving up hope. This unique edition includes articles on the self-sufficiency of the founders, preparing for a worst-case scenario, firearms, financial self-reliance, the importance of community, and many other topics by expert writers. Now, for a limited time, The New American is offering a bundle of three collector's editions, Self-Reliance, The Great Reset, and Trump World, for just $19.95. Available at shopjbs.org. Visit shopjbs.org today. Thank you all for tuning in. 1877 Doc Adali, 1877 D O C D A L I. So, the California minimum wage hike, how did that work out? Are people just raking in the money if you work at fast food, or are they making less money? Well, we're being told they're actually making less money now. They're making less money since the $20 an hour minimum wage hike and mandate for fast food chains. Why? Because well, their hours got cut. Told you, you wake up the sleeping giant. This is why I don't know if Gavin, if, if Gavin Newsom runs. I think he would be very popular among, you know, he's obviously a lot more robust than Biden. He's handsome and 
can speak well, although I do want his voice checked because of the hoarseness. I hope somebody's checking his lyrics. I want to make sure there's not anything go- growing or going on there because he does sound hoarse a lot. But, um, uh, you know, some of his policies um, scare a lot of business owners. They scare the hell out of them. And staff who work at Wendy's, Pizza Hut, Del Taco, Jersey Mike's are getting fewer hours or fewer day shifts. It's according to Daily Mail. Franchisees who run the outlets echo that, saying, yeah, they've had to cut staff hours or cut the total number of staff on the books. One fired 20 people to be able to make the money they needed to stay open. A report by the Associated Press comes a month after a trade group said 10,000 fast food jobs have been cut in California since the law came into effect. Now they say unions dispute the figures. Uh, Enif Somelida, a general manager at a Del Taco in Orange County, said the raise has been a mixed bag. She used to have four people working per shift. Now she only has two. She said, financially, has helped me, but I have less people, so I have to do a lot more work. Uh, Lawrence Chang has seven Wendy's locations. He told AP News that he used to have nearly a dozen employees on the afternoon shift at his Fountain Valley location. Now he only schedules seven for each shift rather than 12 as he scrambles to absorb the dramatic jump in labor costs. Uh, the hourly wage used to be $16. Now it's 20 And keep in mind, I don't, he obviously has money if he owns seven locations. But $4 an hour per employee, not to mention the extra taxes. Workers' comp goes up. Everything goes up. It, yeah, it is. It's huge. So seeing people lose their jobs was not supposed to be the point. And, you know, I, I don't think the powers that be are stupid. I think they know. But what looks better on paper? What sounds better? The $20 an hour minimum wage or some people have their hours cut. They'd rather go with the $20 an hour minimum wage. You would think the job loss, that job loss would be. But nope, the number looks more powerful from a psychological standpoint. They knew people would lose their jobs. They knew franchises would close, but they still get the credit that it's $20 an hour. And once you promise that, you can't go back. It's going to be very, very hard for now you to say, look, guys, we're going to cut your pay. You can't do that. You can't cut somebody's pay. Labor board will get involved. So now that's in the books. It would have to take, uh, I mean, a whole vote and the legislator and everybody in agreement and there'd be this huge outcry and still, I just don't think it's going to happen. So they made history. They knew what they were doing. But now that's what they get to say they did. Now, again, our federal minimum wage is seven twenty-five an hour. It, it doesn't even cover your Tylenol. Uh, it, that, that's a problem. But does it help people? to go to $20 an hour, and then what? You started to have, I think some people in California, some assembly people were asking for $50 an hour minimum wage. Are you kidding me? So the unions push for the raises. Joseph Bryant, executive vice president of the Service Employees International Union, pushed for the raise, said the industry has not only added jobs under their new law, but multiple franchisees have also noted that the higher wage is already attracting better job candidates, thus reducing turnover. So in their defense, you know, when I worked for fast food, I was making about $4.15 an hour. Now I was in the 90s. So I could take it or leave it. I'm only making that. So this job is a means to an end. I'll give you plenty of notice. I will train the person that you need me to train before I leave. But at some point, I got to get a job that pays me more. Well, now, if you're making more fast food, you're not going to leave. So I could see how that's a benefit. But we're already being told that fast food is getting awfully, awfully expensive. Trade group, the California Business and Industrial Alliance, says 10,000 new positions across chains from pizza to Burger King have been cut. So you have one trade group saying, no, there have been losses. 
Others say, no, we've had jobs. Turkey sub, no longer $10. One person said at Jersey Mike's, it's now $11.15. So, you know, I, I don't want people necessarily buying fast food. I don't think fast food is healthy. But I understand why fast food is there. And uh, because, you know, with groceries being high and all that, people have been able to feed their family. On three dollars and fifty three, I think in and out their burgers are three dollars and fifty five cents. They could feed their family for under ten dollars, basically. That's not going to be anymore. And then also the the cheapness of the the products have to start becoming less valuable and less. You know, look at how McDonald's is going to cut the uh, their veggie burger. Or their kind of their impossible burger or whatever. Yeah, it's just, it's expensive. Not easy. So, well, I I know Gavin Newsom is probably going to be later a, a Democratic candidate for president. And some people in California love him. Other people don't. There's an exodus leaving California. And you know, being there for the middle class or for those of lower income mean you have to take everything into account if somebody's hours are being cut like look we're only going to give you 10 hours a week because we have to spend this much money per employee and you need to hustle those 10 hours it's it doesn't help the person who needs you know i understand they could work multiple part-time jobs to try to make it work but how is that easy enough. How, how is that allowing them to have benefits? And it's not. And the only way we are going to stop these high prices is if we say, I'm not going to buy, I'm not going to spend that money. Now, these companies in California, they're, they're screwed because they have to pay the high labor costs. They're going to have to charge more until they just go under. But, you know, we're going to have to say no. You know, Southwest is now looking at starting to change things as opposed to maybe charging for bags or offering upgrades so you get more room so they could get more money. You know, the only way to stop these companies from tr- from upping your price is saying, no, we're not going to buy it, but people will buy it. I have been so uncomfortable on flights that, yes, I have actually paid for upgraded seats. But first of all, if you're getting a product that sucks, you shouldn't be buying it at all. But I, if I have to travel somewhere, I'm desperate. And I've gotten, they've gotten me. They've gotten extra money from me so I can be more comfortable on a plane. It's really going to take us as a whole to say we're not spending money like this, just like with the weight loss drugs. Someone's got to tell the companies, "Uh -uh, I'm not going to spend $1,600. But when Hollywood buys them, they're going to keep selling them for $1,600 a month. 1-877-DOCTOLLY. Considered by most, optimized curcumin is one of the few bioavailable and highly absorbable curcumin products on the market. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch. Since most chronic diseases have inflammation, our optimized curcumin seems to be a perfect addition to any nutritional program. It makes sense to me that preventing or reducing inflammation is a key component to our overall health. The Mayo Clinic found that curcumin can decrease swelling and inflammation, has antioxidant properties, and research suggests that curcumin can prevent cancer, or at least slow the spread of cancer, and in many instances make chemotherapy more effective. It protects our healthy cells even from radiation. TotalWellness.com, where we help you to look good, feel good, and enjoy total wellness.